All right, I want to take a minute here and go over with my experience with Mike White Ford in Coraline, Idaho. I want to give you the complete scenario of what happened. And I like to leave comments on thinking uh, on whether or not you think I got hosed or uh, I got treated right. or. But I'm going to give you the completely unredacted, uh, unredacted uh, version of it. So let's start from the beginning. Um, I have a truck with, uh, I had a truck with 333,000 miles on it and up around Klamath Falls, Oregon. Uh, my turbo went out. I was hauling a uh, three and nine and a half foot fifth wheel. Um, was able to get into a uh, rest area within less than a mile of the turbo going out. But when the turbo went out, um, I lost power I couldn't go more than 50 miles an hour. I looked back in my mirror and I have blown uh, dark black smoke. And I looked over and I got my boost and I said I got no boost on my turbo. So I pulled into the rest area and shut my engine down. Uh, got on the phone, talked to a few people and found out, well, you know, if your turbo is out, you still have power in the engine. You just, you know, you just got no, you can still move. So I said, they, they're about three miles from Chamalt, which is a town. At least I can get a, you know, I get a um, something to eat or something like that while I wait for a tow truck. So I was going to go there, and as soon as I go to pull out of the uh, rest area, um, oil just starts shooting out my uh, tailpipe. Um, I guess the seal and the uh, turbo went out, and it just basically just regurgitated all the oil and less than 100 feet out of my motor. And then my uh, low oil pressure light came on and I basically just turned around in the uh, rest area and parked it. Um, luckily my dad um, was willing to come out. He lives in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Well, not Coeur d'Alene, he lives in uh, Priest River, Idaho. He has a flatbed, so he came out to pick me up. So we take it to Mike White Ford and they do a diagnostic and they said, yeah, your turbo is gone. Yeah, you don't just need a turbo, you need an intercooler too. So it's gonna cost you 3,900 bucks. Well, 3,996, basically $4,000 to fix it. And so we'll get it done, this is on a Thursday, and so we'll have it done for you tomorrow. I call them up, they didn't get it done. They end up getting it done on Monday, which is fine. That's a pretty decent turnaround. Um, they go to pick it up and picked it up I get 10 miles from well 13 miles total from the dealership and the truck starts to overheat and the truck shuts down on me and I get I pull over the side of the road and the motor seized so we get towed back to Mike White Ford uh, basically when the truck overheated it uh, you know blew the bottom end out of the truck at least that's what they assumed because they you know Unless I pay for them to tear the engine apart, find out exactly what caused the problem, I'll, you know, you never know. It's up in the air. Well, anyway, so um, I figured, okay, well, they had it done something wrong with the install of the turbo, or you know, they left an air bubble or something in the um, radiator because the, because the upper radiator hose was just sucked solid. It was like, I mean, it was like just completely collapsed from suction to where there was no flow of water through the engine. So the next day I get a call from Mike, Mike White Ford and they basically say that uh, it wasn't their fault. They uh, they did everything that they were supposed to do and they fixed the turbo. Um, it's just that when they put a new turbo in it, just put an extra stress on the engine because it was at 333,000 miles and it blew it. And I said, no, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with the engine when I brought it in. Um, and the only reason why it blew is because it overheated. So it had it been something you've done to cause it to overheat that you didn't do right. Um, they said, no, we brought it into us with no oil in it. So you drove without any oil. So that's what damaged the engine. So that's probably what damaged the lower end. And I said, no, I, I drove circles around, a circle around in the uh, parking lot of a um, rest area. And that's it. Um, I said, I don't, they didn't care. So basically what they told me is that uh, they're not taking any responsibility for anything and that I'm 100% responsible for it. And I have a brand new turbo, and so I still own for the, I started paying for the turbo. So basically they took my four grand. Um, I got to have a turbo for 10 miles, 13 miles. 
and they took zero responsibility and they said nothing was their fault. So what do you think? Do you think they treated me right? Or do you think they could be culpable in some way? I think, personally, I think they didn't uh, flush the, they had, they, we did dry drain the uh, coolant and there's four, about four gallons. The truck takes about five gallons. That's the other thing. They charged me for three gallons of antifreeze and the mechanic tells me he, he drained my antifreeze out and put my antifreeze back in and topped it off. Did not put three gallons, but they charged me for three gallons of coolant, which I still didn't get my money back on that, by the way. So I paid for three gallons of antifreeze and didn't get it back. The next thing, the I asked him, what about your test driving? So I drove it around the block, everything seemed fine. In my experience, when you get a major repair like that, a test drive around the block is not sufficient. I, you gotta get out there and really drive it and let the engine warm up and get to operating temperature at least, you know, 15, 20 miles of a test drive. Uh, that's been my experience. They didn't do that. They did like around the block. And then I said, well, they said, well, if we would have drove it and it would have seized up on us, it still wouldn't have changed anything because we didn't do anything wrong. So we're not taking responsibility for anything. And I, I said, I tell them, well, there's no way you can say that you have zero culpability in this. And they said, well, we can't say that we don't. We can't say that we do. The evidence points towards uh, not being us. So therefore, you get nothing. And this is basically coming straight. I went all the way up to the owner, uh, Mike White himself, and they basically told me to go pound sand. So down in the comments, you know, tell me what you think. Do you think they treated me right?